In this episode of Vintage Audio Review, I'm going to talk about the ICO HF12 Mono Integrated Amplifier. Now, these guys were made between 1958 to 1963. It's kind of on the verge of stereo from what I gather. And they did sell a tuner, an FM tuner, and that's the guy on the right. It's the HFT90. And I'm going to go ahead and pop up an ad I found from 1958 that shows the ICO line, I guess you would call it. And as you can tell, the HF12 sold for $34.95 as a kit or $57.95 assembled, which would equate to about $382 and six hundred and thirty three dollars in 2024 now i have the hft 90 tuner uh, which is over here on the right and i didn't do any testing with it it just kind of was brought over with the other two pieces just to see how everything kind of matched and and that kind of thing the specifications listed for the hf 12 was that it was rated at 12 watts per channel into 8 ohms at not more than 2% THD and from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz its frequency response was listed at plus or minus a half a dB. It does have a phono stage and a tape head input. I didn't do any testing of those just it, I felt just looking at it as an integrated amplifier would be all that I would do for this video. And I tried to test most of the specifications that were listed for the ICO HF12. You'll see from the tour that these have been recapped. It looks like some resistors have been replaced. I don't know that there were any upgrades for performance done on it. It was just kind of brought to me. Uh, here it is, can you test it for me? The first thing I did was to remove all the tubes and test them just to make sure that they looked okay and they all tested really good. And then I cleaned and lubed the uh, pots and there's one switch in there. So I did all that before I started my testing. I should also mention that for all my testing, I did have the covers off on the units, though I don't think that would really make anything different. It just made them maybe run a little bit cooler possibly. So anyway, what I'll do is give the standard tour. We'll look at the front, the back, and then we'll look at the tubes from uh, the top and we'll see underneath what's going on there. And then I will do my normal testing and we'll tell you what I thought after using and listening to the HF-12s. Here is a more intimate view of the front of the ICO HF-12. And starting on the left, we have our input selector, auxiliary, tuner, phono, and tape head inputs, volume control right here. Our bass control is here, and then we have our on-off switch slash treble control here. <laughs> I don't know why they put the on-off switch as part of the treble control, but they did. As you will see in the back, there's a switched AC outlet, and that plays into the way these two monoblocks are used. And then we have our lamp indicator here that comes on when power is applied. This is the rear of the HF-12, and we'll start over here on the right. We have a tape head input and a phono input, or maybe they're uh, switched here. Then we have our tuner input and our auxiliary input. We have taps for 16, 8, and 4 ohm speakers. This is a tape output, and this control right here is a hum adjust output. And then this is a switched AC outlet, and that plays into the way these two mono blocks are used. And you'll learn about how it's used with this particular pair of ICO HF-12s a little bit later. Here is a view looking down from the top with the covers off, and you can kind of see uh, just the, the tube complement here as well as just how things are laid out. Now, this guy was labeled as slave, and the power cord was also, I think, labeled as slave or in, in purple. And these guys were designed that one of them is plugged into the wall and the other is plugged into the other HF-12, so that when you turn one on, the other comes on. Here is the bottom side of the HF-12 showing all the circuitry in interconnected and you can see there have been a lot of capacitor uh, replacements as well as it looks like a few resistors have been replaced i don't know if this was part of an upgrade or just normal stuff that goes bad in these the other hf12 has exactly the same kind of 
updates done to it. Right now, I've got the ICO HF12s to give me the maximum gain they can do, which is about 23.5 dB. Uh, one has a little less gain than the other just to get the, the two amps to balance out, but pretty much you're going to get about 23.5 dB of gain out of these guys. And we're putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohms. You can see our SNRs are varying oh, between about 64 to 70 dB, and the THDs are better than 0.3%. Our THD plus noise is around minus 52 dB. The HF12 has a continuous output power of 12 watts into 8 ohms at not more than 2% THD. And you can see that we're, we're under a percent for the right channel, and we're only 0.3% for the left channel. So those look pretty good. SNRs are in the 60s. Gain is a bit over 23 dB. Nothing has changed. It just has a little bit less gain when you're hitting this max power. And you can see the uh, THD plus noise got a bit worse. I thought I'd push the HF12 to see how much power I could get out and keep it less than 2% THD. And we're right about that here for the right channel and the left channel is a little bit under that. SNRs aren't great at, oh, we'll say 45 dB. And you can see we're putting out about 15.2 watts or 3 watts into 8 ohm loads. THD looks pretty ugly and that's kind of apparent from this, <laughs> this harmonics output here. The gain dropped about a half a dB from where it was at 12 watts. In case you were wondering what was going on with the harmonics, here we have kind of mixed results and the uh, HF12 is putting out about 12 watts into 8 ohm loads. And it's kind of mixed in that our red here, that's the right channel, the third harmonic, the odd harmonic, is higher than the even or second harmonic. However, with the left channel, the even harmonic or second harmonic is higher than the odd or third harmonic. So it's kind of a mixed bag as far as the harmonics go. Right now, I've got the HF12s putting out about 5 watts into 4 ohm loads. And if you compare it with the 8 ohm load case, you'll notice the gain is uh, down by 3 dB. That's kind of expected. And the SNRs are either uh, a few dB better or maybe a dB better with the 4 ohm load case. THDs are overall about the same. And uh, everything else kind of looks uh, about the same. Maybe the noise on the left channel is a little bit better with the 4 ohm load case. Right now, I've got the HF12s putting out about 14 watts into 4 ohm loads. And if you compare it with the max power into 8 ohm loads before this gets really ugly looking, it actually looks uglier with the 8 ohm loads, which we're able to do about 15 watts into 8 ohm loads. So the THDs look pretty good at the spec for this guy is about 2%. So the right channel is hitting 2%, a little bit under on the left channel. The SNRs look about 10 dB better with the 4 ohm loads. And if you look at the picture, you'll see there's a lot more harmonics in the 8 ohm load case. So it's uh, also got less gain, 19 dB of gain versus 22, almost 23 dB of gain with the 8 ohm load case, which kind of expected. But anyway, that's kind of what it looks like into 4 ohm loads. Here is a plot showing the harmonic levels of the HF12 amplifiers with them putting out about 5 watts in a 4 ohm loads. You can see that our odd right harmonic, the third harmonic, is higher than the right even harmonic, and the left odd harmonic, the third harmonic, is higher than the even or second harmonic for the left channel. So it's slightly different than what you saw with it putting out 5 watts into 8 ohm loads. Here are the HF12 frequency responses from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with them putting out about 1 watt into 8 ohm loads. And that's per the specification, which says that they should have a frequency response of plus or minus half a dB over that frequency range and power level. And we're really not too far away from that with the left uh, amplifier. We're down maybe six tenths of a dB. And with the right amplifier, we've got this hump here around, oh, up around 200 hertz, and it's a bit over a dB. Now, I should point out that I have adjusted the bass and treble controls as best as I could to try to get these responses as flat as I could. And for the 
uh, right amplifier, this is about as good as I could get. And overall, for something that is as old as this, it's really not tremendously bad when you think about it. Here is a frequency response plot with both of the HF12s putting out about 1 watt into 4 ohm loads per the specification, which says that it should be plus or minus half a dB across that band. Now, the left channel is definitely meeting that requirement. The right channel uh, is doing pretty good, except around 200 hertz here. We're about 1.2, 1.3 dB. And so we're off there. I'm not really sure what's causing this. I did have to move the bass controls a little bit, mainly on the left channel from where the 8 ohm settings were for the bass uh, control in order to try to get this response flat. This plot shows the output impedance for each of the HF12 amplifiers. There is a specification that the damping should be greater than or equal to 8. And if we use the value at 1 kilohertz, we come up with a damping factor of about 8.9. So it is meeting its requirement. For the multi-tone distortion, depending on which channel you look at, the right channel worse than the left channel, you're going to come up with a distortion-free range of between 7 to maybe 8.5 bits of distortion-free range. Right now we're looking at the IM distortions of both of the HF12 amplifiers. And this is for a 19 kilohertz and a 20 kilohertz tone applied such that we're putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohm loads. Our volume control is still set for around 23 and a half dB. Now, if you put this in the spreadsheet calculator that I have, the IM distortion actually calculates really good for this. It's less than... Uh, well, uh, well under 1%. In fact, it would be 0.009% and 0.008%. And that's kind of a little bit hard for me to believe, but that's what it's showing as far as the uh, calculations. Now, if you look at it another way and you compare the uh, peak signals to the one kilohertz tone, you would see that our distortion free range would be about eight or maybe slightly greater than eight. There was a specification for IM distortion, but that used a 60 hertz tone and I believe a 7 kilohertz tone, and they're different levels. And um, I didn't recreate that. I kind of just recreated something a little bit more modern for this. I should point out that for all of the measurements, I've been using the auxiliary inputs of both of the HF12s. And in this case, I've got both of those auxiliary inputs terminated into shorts and we're just looking at the noise of the system basically the power supply related noise and it's really not too bad compared to some other uh, amplifiers I've tested particularly tube amps I mean we're better than we'll say 75 dB and I'm guessing that I'm going to hear this when I hook it up to the uh, speakers I'm going to use for uh, the listening portion of this test which will be the La Scala's and I'm pretty sure I'm going to hear this, but it's really not overly uh, that bad at all. I should also mention that the volume controls have been set for basically 23 dB of gain, and both of the HF12s are connected to 8 ohm loads for this test. ICO did have a specification for transient response, and let me read what it says. Excellent square wave reproduction for microsecond rise time negligible ringing, rapid settling on 10kc square wave. So here is our 10kc square wave. And you can see that it doesn't look too bad. We got some overshoot and undershoot. And our rise time is 4.11 microseconds. So it's right in there at the 4 microsecond specification at 10 kilohertz. There was also a specification for the signal to noise ratio, or they called it hum and noise level, 12 watts and below. And so I brought it back up to 12 watts. And it said for the auxiliary input, we should have about 75 dB of SNR. And we're right at 68. That's not too far off, I guess, in the grand scheme of things for this old amplifier. One of the HF12's on-off switches on the trouble control was opened up so they shorted the input to the output so that amplifier was always on and what you were to do was to plug that amplifier into the switched AC outlet 
of the other amplifier and the person who had done the work had actually painted both the power cord and the uh, AC socket in a scarlet paint to kind of to make sure that you plugged it in. Plus he labeled one as master and slave and you saw that on the tour. So to me that was a good solution. Probably you could find a replacement uh, on off switch to mount to the back of that pop. But to me that was a very practical solution. These guys draw maybe an amp and a quarter when they're you know running. Uh, they don't draw a lot of current. So my biggest complaint would be that the on off switch is on the treble control. I have never seen that. You'll see it on a, you know, a separate on off switch, of course, or the on off switch will be on the speaker switch or the on off switch may be on the volume control, but I've never seen it on the treble control. That makes absolutely no sense to me because now your treble setting is varied a little bit each time you uh, turn it on and off. So it must not have been a big deal to the people at ICO back at the time, but that was just kind of an, odd, an oddity. As far as listening to the HF-12s, I connected each of them to a Klipsch Lascala loudspeaker and I connected my Carver C1 preamplifier to each of the HF-12s and my source was my Hi-Fi Walker uh, DAT music player. And I listened to normal music with that and it sounded uh, really fine. No complaints uh, at all. The HF-12s did a really good job, I thought. I was hitting oh, 86 dB SPLs occasionally. I could have gone louder, but that was plenty loud for this test and they sounded just really good. Now, I had the gain set for the maximum, which is around 23 dB when I did uh, the testing. And with the gain set that high, when I terminated uh, the auxiliary inputs and just listened for hum and hiss, it did have uh, hum and hiss that, that varied depending on you know its mood. So uh, it was fairly loud. And when I was done testing, I moved the volume controls back down to around four and listened for hum and hiss. And it was just a, you know real mild, kind of typically what you get out of a solid state or uh, tube receiver amplifier integrated amp. So. It's just, when I did the testing, I wanted to gain it at the max and wanted to just use the uh, Carver C1 to control that. Now, if you own these, uh, you know, I don't like the idea of going and adjusting each of the volume controls all the time, one on one side and go over the other side. And, you know, uh, that's just not for me. So if these were mine, I would be hooking them up to a preamplifier so I didn't have to tweak all the volume controls. Out. Plus you have maybe some more uh, inputs you could use that were better than the phono input that these have, which I did not test, but I'm guessing they probably did not look real good. So anyway, that's kind of my take on this. It sounds great. Uh, it's, you know, a cute little pair of integrated amplifiers. If you are in the market for something and you have efficient speakers, uh, they certainly would probably keep you happy. <laughs> so that's kind of my overall take on the HF-12s and once again, if you like the video, you know, thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, or criticisms, that kind of thing, uh, you know, please leave them in the appropriate area and I will respond back. And please subscribe to the channel if you have not. So, once again, until next time, have a great day or night.